Hello everyone, this is Dr. P. Miriyanupuma here with the topic Oxidation Reduction Enzymes. Learning outcomes. By the end of the lesson, the learners will be able to comprehend what are oxidation reduction enzymes, what are they, what do they catalyze, then illustrate about oxygenases and oxidases, narrate examples of dehydrogenases and its types, then they will be able to explain importance of hydroperoxidases, cytochrome P450 based monooxygenases and superoxide dismutases. Contents of this video or this lesson will include introduction to oxidation reduction re enzymes, then oxygenases, oxidases, dehydrogenases and its types. Then we have hydroperoxidases where we will be studying about catalases. Then cytochrome P450 based monooxygenases and even superoxide dismutases. Let us go to introduction. We know these definitions, the definitions of oxidation and reduction. The term oxidation is defined as removal of electrons and the term reduction. It indicates gain of electrons. They both happen hand in hand where you see that oxidation is always accompanied by reduction. If these reactions are happening in the biological systems, the molecular oxygen, it will be directly participating in all the oxidation reactions. Molecular oxygen, it is incorporated into many substances in us. And the enzymes which are performing such activity, they are termed as oxygenases. So it is not just the substrates uh, that are oxidized within the biological systems, but there are other substrates also. These include drugs, pollutants and even xenobiotics. We all know that xenobiotics are nothing but the substances which enter our body from outside. They are totally foreign to us. These include many chemical carcinogens which will be consumed. So these chemical carcinogens or the xenobiotics they are acted upon by oxygenases. And in the present topic, I will be dealing about oxygenases, oxidases and many such enzymes which are required for us to know before going to electron transport chain. Let us learn about the first set of enzymes, oxygenases. These oxygenases are enzymes that oxidize substrate by transferring oxygen atom from ox molecular oxygen. That means if it is O2, a single atom of oxygen is transferred by oxygenases. And these enzymes, they all come under this category of enzymes which is the oxidoreductases. They contain oxygen and also they have these organic cofactors that are required for the enzyme to perform their activity. And the organic cofactor is flavin. These cofactors like the flavin based cofactors, they interact with the oxygen and thereby if the oxygen is to be transferred onto the substrate, this flavin is required. So they are helping in the transfer of oxygen to the substrate. Oxygenases that are present in the biological systems 
are classified into two types. We have monooxygenases and dioxygenases. First category is monooxygenases. These are also called as mixed function oxidases and these enzymes are involved in the transfer of just one oxygen atom to the substrate. Just one oxygen atom to the substrate they transfer and this is also accompanied by reduction of the other oxygen atom which is left and that oxygen atom upon reduction results in the formation of water. So here we can see if this is the substrate and this is the oxygen molecule, the product which is formed has just one oxygen atom while the other oxygen atom is reduced to form water. Then we have the next category, dioxygenases. These dioxygenases, they, also, they are also oxygen transferases just like monooxygenases. But you see that here, both the oxygen atoms, they are incorporated into the substrate to form the product. So here both oxygen atoms are getting transferred to the substrate, resulting in the formation of product. One best example is the reaction catalyzed by cytochrome P450 oxidase. So this is the difference between monooxygenases and dioxygenases. The second category of oxidation reduction enzymes are the oxidating enzymes oxidases. These oxidases also use oxygen as the hydrogen acceptor. So these, they catalyze the reactions which involve removal of hydrogen from the substrate. So if AH is the substrate, these enzymes catalyze in such a way that H hydrogen is removed from the substrate and oxygen becomes the hydrogen acceptor. And this could result in the formation of water or hydrogen peroxide along with the product. So the reaction products will be along with the product you have either water or hydrogen peroxide. So oxidases are involved in the removal of hydrogen with the help of oxygen. Based upon their composition, the oxidases are classified into several categories. So we have some oxidases that contain copper. Some may contain flavoprotein also. And we'll be seeing these two categories. Copper containing oxidases. We know about these cytochrome oxidases. So a cytochrome oxidase is a hemoprotein and it is found widely distributed in many of the tissues and it has a characteristic prosthetic group as you see in myoglobin, hemoglobin as well as cytochromes. This cytochrome oxidase it is the final component of the respiratory transport chain which you see in the mitochondria and is the carrier of electrons generated by dehydrogenases during the oxidation of substrate molecules. So once the substrate molecules are oxidized due to the dehydrogenases, finally the hydrogen uh, acceptor during this transport chain would be our oxygen. So this is also called as cytochrome A3. Nowadays we call it as cytochrome A A3. So it has cytochrome A as well as cytochrome A3 into a single protein complex, hence it is known as cytochrome A, A3. So this cytochrome A, A3, as such it consists of two heme molecules and each one has one iron atom, each heme has one iron atom and this iron atom will be 
oscillating between the states Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus during all the oxidation reduction reactions. So, in addition to the iron, as we said, it is a copper containing oxidase. It consists of two copper atoms which are also bound to the heme units. So, that's why we call them as copper containing oxidases. Next is oxidases as flavoproteins. Flavoproteins, these are also enzymes. Some of them are also enzymes which contain FMN or FAD. FMN is flavin mononucleotide and FAD is flavin adenine dinucleotide. Both of these act as prosthetic groups for these enzymes. FM and FAD, they are formed in the body because of the vitamin riboflavin. riboflavin. From riboflavin, you get this FM and FAD. And you see that these two prosthetic groups, they are not tightly bound. That means they are not covalently bound. They are tightly bound but not covalently bound. And you have metalloflavoproteins. The, all these are metalloflavoproteins. And they will be containing one or more of metal, metal atoms. Okay, as their cofactors. Next is the best example for this flavoprotein enzymes which acts as oxidase is L-amino oxidase. This L-amino oxidase, it has FMN. So, it is flamin mononucleotide related enzyme and you find this in the kidney. And it is involved in oxidative deamination of this amino acid of L-amino acids. It is involved in oxidative deamination of L-amino acids. So, this is an oxidase which is a flavoprotein having FMN. The third category of enzymes are dehydrogenases. These dehydrogenases again they are variously classified but they have two main groups based upon their functions. So I have just given them their names type A and type B type so that you know we can understand the functions. Type A that means these are those enzymes which transfer hydrogen from one substrate to another. That's it. They are transferring one uh, hydrogen from one substrate to another. And this is a coupled reaction. That is oxidation reduction reaction. So these are type A. While we have type B dehydrogenases, uh, these are involved in the electron transport chain that finally transfer the hydrogen to oxygen. They will be transferring the hydrogen to oxygen. They are components of the electron transport chain. Type A dehydrogenases. These dehydrogenases, they have specific substrates and they require some hydrogen carriers which are usually coenzymes. So, these hydrogen carriers are NAD plus and they are involved in the reactions. And these are reversible reactions. These enzymes, they allow transfer of reducing equivalents within the cell like this hydrogen atom transfer. So, this type of reactions, the advantage is they facilitate oxidation of one substrate at the cost of another. So, here in this if you see AH2 is the, is the one particular substrate and NAD plus is the hydrogen carrier. AH2 is getting oxidized while NADH is getting reduced. And this is particularly valuable for supporting oxidative uh, phosphorylation or oxidation processes mainly when oxygen is not there such as under anaerobic phase of glycolysis and all this will be very useful 
And here is an example for type B dehydrogenases. We have seen that type B dehydrogenase best example is respiratory chain where oxygen is the hydrogen acceptor. You see that as carbohydrates or fatty acids or amino acids, as they are getting oxidized to carbon dioxide and water, the reducing equivalents, that means the hydrogen atoms, they are transferred to NADH and H plus as well as FADH2. This NADH, again, these two, they will be transferring to oxygen. And parallelly, water will be evolved. That is also accompanied by the synthesis of ATP. So here you see that oxygen becomes the acceptor for hydrogen as in the electron transport chain. The next category of dehydrogenases are niacin based dehydrogenases. We know that niacin is a vitamin. So these dehydrogenases, these are produced in the body with the help of the vitamin niacin and that is utilized to produce either NAD plus or NADP plus or both. So these dehydrogenases, they'll have NAD plus or NADP plus. NAD plus means nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide and NADP plus means nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, phosphates. So, this particular enzymes, this group of enzymes, they can have either NAD plus or NADP plus or they can have both of them. These coenzymes which we have mentioned, NAD plus and NADP plus, these are reoxidized by only appropriate electron acceptors if they are there and after being reduced by dehydrogenases uh, with a particular substrate in the presence of a particular substrate. So they separate from their corresponding epoenzymes. Once it is done, they become free and the reactions are reversible as we have seen previously. You see this niacin based dehydrogenases getting involved in many oxidation pathways like as you see in glycolysis, citric acid cycle, respiratory chain which is operating in the mitochondria uh, like we have this NAD linked dehydrogenases. So all of these things they will be catalyzing both oxidation as well as reduction reactions. And you see that this NADP linked dehydrogenases they are very characteristic. They are present in all the reductive synthesis reactions. Uh, as you see in the pentose phosphate pathway reactions, even the extra mitochondrial pathway which is uh, for the synthesis of fatty acids and even in the steroid synthesis pathway. The next category is flavin based dehydrogenases. These flavin based dehydrogenases these are very much comparable with what we have seen previously that is FMN and FAD based oxidases. As compared to the this previous one which we have seen that is nicotinamide coenzymes, these riboflavin based ones they are more tightly bound to their epoenzymes. Then most of these they are involved in the transfer of electrons. So, this transfer of electrons is done either within the respiratory chain or they will be doing into the respiratory chain. We have this enzyme NADH dehydrogenase. This enzyme is involved in the transport of electrons and it does it from NADH. From NADH, the electrons are transferred to other elements of the respiratory chain which are at a higher redox potential. Let us see some other examples of dehydrogenases of this type. We have succinate dehydrogenase, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase and even mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. You have this example wherein lipoate is reduced. 
so here this reduced lipoate it is dehydrogenated with a flavin dependent dehydrogenase and you also have some intermediary carriers of electrons like this acyl coa dehydrogenase which is a riboflavin dependent one and many other components of respiratory chain the next interesting category is cytochromes as dehydrogenases we all know that cytochromes are hemoproteins they contain iron atom and this iron atom will be fluctuating between fe3 plus and then fe2 plus as it is getting oxidized or reduced and function of these cytochromes if you see they are involved in the electron transport they are important components of respiratory chain and these are involved in moving the electrons from the flavo proteins to the final one that is cytochrome oxidase and when you look at the respiratory chain it has many number of or many types of cytochromes these include cytochrome b cytochrome c1 cytochrome c cytochrome a and cytochrome a3 we know that cytochrome a a3 is cytochrome oxidase which we have seen previously an oxidase so other examples where cytochromes are found are uh, you have this endoplasmic reticulum that has cytochromes which include cytochrome p450 and cytochrome b5 these you find them in plants in bacteria as well as in yeast cells fourth category of enzymes are the hydroperoxidases as such we have two types of hydroperoxidases that are found in plants as well as in the animals these two are the peroxidases and the catalases peroxidases or hydroperoxidases these are the enzymes that are involved in protecting our body from peroxides which are very very harmful to us so what do these peroxidases or hydroperoxidases do is they'll be preventing accumulation of peroxides so if peroxides are left like that they will lead to the generation of free radicals and these free radicals they can disrupt our cell membrane which can in turn like in future as it proceeds for longer duration it can lead to cancer and also atherosclerosis peroxidases peroxidases you find them in the leukocytes platelets and many other tissues which are involved in eicosanoid metabolism eicosanoid metabolism these peroxides they have protoheme group as the prosthetic group and then the hydrogen peroxide is reduced by these peroxidases so peroxidases they will be reducing hydrogen peroxide and this reaction is happening at an expense of multiple compounds which will function as electron acceptors these acceptors include quinones cytochrome c as well as ascorbate and here you have the enzyme important enzyme in us glutathione peroxidase this glutathione peroxidase it has selenium as the prosthetic group and it is involved in the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide you also have the lipid hydroperoxide which is reduced by glutathione and this will be shielding hemoglobin the membranes the lipid membranes of the cells from the peroxides so
so you have the tissues protected as well as the erythrocytes which are protected from the action of hydrogen peroxide which is generated within us that is how glutathione peroxide will be protecting us catalases we all know that catalases are also hemoproteins so these hemoproteins they contain four heme groups and their activity is also similar to peroxidase activity they also utilize or they also act upon hydrogen peroxide but the difference is they use one molecule of hydrogen peroxide as substrate electron donor it acts as a substrate electron donor one molecule while another hydrogen peroxide molecule it acts as an oxidant or electron acceptor when you see the action of this catalases in vivo they are like the peroxide activity under in vivo conditions so if you see the main uh, locations where this enzyme is found you find it in the blood in the mucous membrane bone marrow liver kidney etc it will be destroying hydrogen peroxide which is formed by the action of oxidases which are present in our body peroxisomes are the ones which are rich in oxidases as well as catalases these peroxisomes are the organelles and the tissues which have this peroxisomes more are in us it is the liver so liver is rich in oxidases and catalases you see that oxidases they are involved in the production of hydrogen peroxide while catalase is the one which is destroying it so both these are grouped together these two enzymes are grouped together so if one is the producing agent while the other one is this is producing it while the other one is destroying it so they are grouped like that apart from this we also have this mitochondrial and microsomal electron transport chains and xanthan oxidases these are also supposed to be acting and they are also additional sources for hydrogen peroxide production so that catalases can act on them and then it is hydrolyzed to water and oxygen water and oxygen the fifth category is cytochrome p450 as mono oxygenases it is overwhelming to know that our body consists of more than 1000 different characterized heme containing mono oxygenases and all these come into the family of cytochrome p450 super family these enzymes they are supposed to be or they are considered to be very much significant and reduction of these cytochromes it requires donation of reducing equivalents from our nadh or nadph which are produced during the oxidation of substrates or by molecules so later what you see is that these cytochromes they also undergo some oxidative stress from the substrates with the help of because of some sequence of enzymes uh, which we uh, call them as hydroxylase like which are known to belong to this hydroxylase cycle so cytochrome p450 and cytochrome b5 these are present in liver microsomes and they play a crucial role in detoxifying because of this substrates from the which are causing stress this cytochrome p450 monoxygenases 
they are able to hydroxylate some molecules like benzopyrin aminopyrin aniline morphine benzaphamine okay this hydroxylation of these xenobiotics we can say these things it increases their solubility and also helps their excretion through the kidneys you have numerous medications also including phenobarbital that has this capacity to stimulate synthesis of this cytochrome p450 monoxygenase and microsomal enzymes so uh, this uh, steroid hormones production it comes from cholesterol we know that and cytochrome p450 systems they have a function in that and you have this steroidogenic tissues like our placenta testis ovary and even adrenal cortex there is there also you find this cytochrome p450 uh, monooxygenase systems so you see here that cytochrome p450 it can get reduced and it it different like it, it uh, moves between these two states that is a reduced state and a oxidized state so during this process say for example if this is the substrate it enables its hydroxylation if this is the substrate a drug or benzopyrin it enables its oxidation so that it is hydroxylated and finally you see that this hydroxylated form of any molecule which is produced in stress or any molecule which has entered our body like aniline or morphine or aminopyrin it is solubilized so that it can be excreted from the urine the last category is superoxide dismutases so these enzymes we find them in aerobic organisms like us and it helps us get protection from oxygen toxicity so when the oxygen if it is getting single electron when a single electron is transferred to it it becomes what is known as a superoxide anion free radical which is potentially harmful to us so this can cause further damage as it can initiate free radical chain reactions it can initiate free radical chain reactions so this potential toxicity of such oxygen if it is there then you see that the body starts producing superoxide dismutase as it has to be eliminated from the body the tissues start producing superoxide dismutase and the superoxide dismutase eliminates them by reducing them resulting in the formation of water and oxygen this sort of reactions we see them in the aerobic organisms but not in obligate anaerobes we have this flavins when reduced flavin superoxides if they are formed like as in xanthine oxidase you see univalent reoxidized by molecular oxygen there also you have superoxide production or superoxide creation taking place in such situations this superoxide dismutase comes into play so these are the reference books uh, that i have used while preparing the content of this particular topic we have uh, lelinger's principles of biochemistry then usachunarena biochemistry and harper's illustrated biochemistry all these three were used summarize what we have learned uh, we have studied about what are oxidation reduction reactions then oxygenases then what are oxidases dehydrogenases then hydroperoxidases then cytochrome p450 monooxygenases as well as superoxide dismutases i hope you have understood the lesson please go through the video once again and then uh, please read the notes also so that you can prepare yourself for the assessment thank you